Okay. So now that we know how it's supposed to work, we'll see if we can get it to work. So we'll put that one in. Bring herself up. We got another one. Different colors helps because you can see what's what. We'll stuff that one up in the hole. So, we're ready to fire. We come back. We let that lock, which it has to do. Then we should come apart. And if you can see, you can see the bolt start moving forward. And our handle stays where it's at. And we unlock. Okay? How well this works is something that's almost impossible to do here. Because we don't have the force to make this happen at the speed it's supposed to happen. But this one will come up, kick that one out, and there we go. We let go of our bolt handle before we got rid of this one. And what we got is a half ejected shell. If you see the red one in there, we got a red one jammed in right behind it. That's just because it was too slow. Okay? If we'd have got that one out of the way, we're ready to chamber our next round. This is the other thing you want to look for. Does this get bound on the shell carrier on its way up? Another common thing, if you don't have the spring tension on this, where I pointed out before for the kick up and the kick down, it's got to have enough spring pressure when it rides over center to lift that heavy shell up, and it's got to do it quick. Okay? So if you're getting what I just showed you, and we've been through our ring, and our ring seems to be working fine and everything, we know we're just doing this faster than it can do it. If everything else looks good, and that's the problem that we're having in the field, we're going to look back and make sure that we've got the tension on that to get a heavy shell shoved up in there faster then we let the bolt go and the bolt can come forward. Okay. Again, here's another problem. You see, we're coming forward. Our handle's back. But our locking lug hasn't fully disengaged. I'm going to have to jerk on this to get it to come apart. To strip that shell. Okay. That's the main problem with this gun. It doesn't want to release the barrel smoothly. So, what's going to happen when I take this out to the field and shoot it? I've got a massive spring shoving this barrel forward. That barrel's coming forward. It don't care. One way or another, that barrel's coming forward. If I don't unlock my bolt, it's going to pull that bolt forward. We've got a big hunk of iron sticking through this hole. Okay? If we don't get that hunk of iron out of there, this is going forward, and it's going to drag anything hooked to it forward. So what we're going to do is we're going to cycle back, closed. We're going to start coming forward, and we're not going to separate. And what we're going to end up doing is just pulling that so hard, we're going to override our flip latch piece that we looked at. You can see it was rounded. Okay, we didn't have a whole lot. It's not a lot of positive engagement. We don't want to be holding this super, super, super tight. We just want to hold it back. All we have to do is just keep this handle back. That's all we're holding is this little handle. If we hold that handle back, it pulls our locking lug down when everything goes forward like you just saw. All that was working fine. The problem was our locking lug is not letting go of the bolt. So we do that again real fast and real hard like it normally would. See our bolt come forward? Alright, we're pulling our bolt. So on this gun, half the time it works if everything locks up and it lets go. And half the time this just comes forward. I've got my spent case still in the barrel. So when I pull my handle back, i got a spent case sitting here and I've got a loaded case sitting down here on my carrier. It's one of the things that make these, when they get this worn, it's not cost effective to repair them. Because the amount of time that I put in redoing the ejector, redoing the extractor, checking the timing and all this, it's, it's, 
the gun's not worth that amount of money. That's the other reason I'm making this, to give you guys an idea of what to look for. So that if you do want to call me, gentleman sent me this. He's an older gentleman. He wants to pass it down to his grandkids. I got a soft spot for that. So I like guns being handed down. My father gave me my his guns. I'll give them to my son, blah, 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 blah. So I get the video out of this, which is one thing, which gets to help all you. He's eventually going to get a working gun that he can hand down to his son. And don't try and fool me and say you want to give it to your kids and all this because I'll know. Guns tell you a lot about the person. Now see, I can tell this guy, one thing he's married. How do you know that? Look at the ring finger side. See all the scratches and cuts and dents? <laughs> That's from his ring finger running across there from his wedding ring. He also did a lot of ground shooting because he held so far back instead of farther forward. So I know he shot a lot of small game. I also know that by the barrel. We have a small bulge right here. That's because, like I yell at my son, we carried it with the barrel down. We stuffed it when we got dirt stuffed in the end of it. And luckily for him, it blew the dirt out of the end of the barrel before it blew and totally split the whole thing. Plus just the wear on it. It's got a lot of wear on it. So, But for what is the actual problem with this, and I'm not going to go into this in great detail because this is one of the parts is why I don't do trigger jobs and things like that. Uh, you need to know what you're doing and this is some place on the bolt that we're really going to poke and prod around. This is the easiest way to totally destroy your gun. All the things I've showed you so far are cheap and mostly available because whether it's a 300 or 900, uh, a blowback recoil operated like this, or it's gas operated. A lot of these parts, for the most part, are, are still readily available. So if you go filing too much on this, it ain't no big deal. Fifteen dollars, you can buy another one. If you screw up your shell holder, you know, ten, twelve dollars, it's no big deal. If you overfile your if you have the rivet in injector and you, you mess with it and overfile it, it's just knock two rivets out, put two rivets in. So all these are things that you can do to relatively inexpensive. The things that are hard to get, filing on this, you want to be extremely careful if you do that. And do not ever, ever, ever try and bend this. If you think it needs to be up higher or whatever, what you need to do is work these pieces down here. Okay, you're going to file that to get more lift if you're not lifting your shell all the way up. You're going to work on the front here if you're not coming all the way down and your shell's hitting the front of the carrier instead of riding up on top of the carrier. These have a lot of free swing in them in the gun, so it's not as big a problem as, as others. But these parts are hard to get, and it's hard to get one that's not completely worn out. If you go buy used stuff, most of these guns are old. You're going to end up one that's as worn out as the one that you had. Okay. On this one, I'm going to do my best to try and show this to you. This black piece right here, you can see we can go back and forth. If we come up a little bit, we lock. And we're not passing that. All right? That's part of the timing on this when your bolt's all the way back, as opposed to when your bolt is in motion. When you're in the battery position, This is pretty. This is going to be at the point where it wants to hold the two together. Is the best I can explain it to you. What locks it are these little fingers, right here. And you'll see when I pull that back, there's two little lips right here, and there's two little lips right there. Work just like a sear. Okay. So what's happening with this one is when we come all the way back with our barrel. And we hold that lever and we start moving forward. We're not disengaging that all the way. So when our big mass, when our shell comes back and hits the release and we let go of our handle piece, actually we're not even doing that at this point. We're, with, our single, with our single shot empty shell tube, when this comes back, we don't have enough engagement 
between our holding part here to our handle because we've got an 800 pound spring that's bringing that barrel and everything else forward. Okay, so if we don't unlock this lock, we're pulling this right over top. It's just going to take those two pieces and it's going to shove that carrier down and come forward. Now when it shoves that carrier down, we haven't let it go. Okay, so our carrier latch is never going to want to come this way. Because we're doing, we're letting this go, we're working backwards. We're letting this go first instead of letting this go first, which lets this go. Okay, and that's where you're going to end up with the shell on the ground. Alright, so I'm not going to go into this because bolt lock and all that is a safety issue. They have to be locked together. You have to have extremely good engagement on this. Otherwise, it doesn't work the way it does. And when you pull the trigger, it blows this back. And that's not a good thing because this needs to be locked until everything comes out the end. And this is how it does that. If you got an 870 or another pump, if you squeeze the trigger, if it's not locked all the way up, which has other pieces back in there that tell it, that yes, I am full battery, I have full engagement on my locking lug, the trigger will work. This one doesn't care, okay? The locking lug is independent, it works off the spring and works off of this. So if you mess that up, you can make an extremely dangerous gun that you can end up with a lot of little pieces of brass coming out the side of the ejection port and you won't have to worry about does it eject anymore or not because it's gonna do it once or twice and you'll be done. All right, so that's pretty much all I got. I hope that covered everything and gave you a, a pretty good indication of what to look for. I'm going to do a quick recap on our diagnostic steps. All right, so we're going to recap every, we know how everything works. So now what we got to do is figure out what's not working and why it's not working. Which of course, this is the, the heart of this whole video. Okay, so the first thing in our diagnostic we're going to do, no shell in our tube, single chambered shell, fire it and see what we have. Question number one, does our bolt lock back? Okay, if it doesn't, we know we need to look in this area and make sure that we're holding our shell carrier down and we have enough grip to hold our handle back and we're disengaging our locking lug. Okay, any of those three is going to make either this let go or the barrel come forward. All right, if we didn't kick our shell out and it's just flopping around in there, we don't, we don't have enough good, good enough hold with our extractor or we're not hitting it or we have a worn ejector to where we don't have that nice positive kick coming out. Much more common on these than the ones that have the two because the two extractors pinch it and kind of hold it. If that's the case, are we holding this one so tight that when our ejector hits the end of the case, all we're doing is pushing everything out of the way and we're just riding right on by. Okay. Usually if that happens, we're just going to rechamber the empty shell. All right, so if we shoot a single one and everything comes forward, everything looks good, but we just have a loose shell in there, we're going to look at these pieces. All right, our second thing is we're going to put a shell in our tube. We're going to chamber a shell because now we're going to enact how this should all work to let everything go, to find out are we too fast, too slow, whatever. The three options we're going to get is a sideways shell with a shell sitting underneath it. That tells us pretty much everything wanted to work. We properly let go of a shell. We let go. Everything came forward. We just didn't get this one out of the way fast enough. So we're either not hitting it hard enough to get it out. Again, for this, turn the gun that way. Let gravity help you get this out. Shoot two or three. Spin this around. If you hold the gun down like that and it works great, we're not kicking it hard enough fast enough to get it out. Change our ring. Slow everything down. Give us a little more time to get this out of there. Okay? The other thing is the timing of the lift, uh, how tight we have it, what we have on this, are we letting that go too early, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's kind of, you just need to look at it, you need to think about how it works and find out what it's doing. The other is we end up with a shell smashed like that. The million dollar question again, did we dispense a shell out of here? Okay, if we did and we got one jammed on top of the other, we're usually either going to rechamber this, our empty shell, and we're going to have one on our carrier or we're going to wedge this one in there sideways like this and smash the front of it, okay, and we'll have one underneath. 
in that case when you pull the bolt back get this one out of there we want to look and see where our shell down in the bottom is okay we might be doing everything perfect for trying to get this one out of the hole but we're letting this one go too early and it's coming back and letting everything go before we have time to get this out All right if we're not holding that shell up in this tube until the barrel lets it go and a lot of time that is surge every time you shoot it all of these are going to move up the tube when you recoil and then they're going to come back down if we don't have a good enough bite on this lip to stop it it's going to jump forward a little bit it's going to come back it's going to ride right over top of that and it's going to come right out while we're coming back so as soon as we come back we've already got this shoved in there when we come back it's going to let it go this is going to immediately pop up before we have a chance to kick that other one out okay so that's the reason that you want to start with nothing in here we want to make sure that we got this working this is working right then we're going to put a shell in it and we're going to find out what are we doing okay we're either coming out too fast we're coming up too high or we're jamming this one or everything's just working too fast you can flip that ring and again as these wear it makes less and less difference on that ring so you're going to have to figure out does everything work right we're just going too fast you're going to need a new friction ring okay it takes a long time for those to wear down to the point that they really don't do anything and it's not don't squeeze it in a vise or something to try and get more friction that's just not going to work it's going to make it drag so slow <coughs> the other thing is short cycle while we're on here <coughs> if we have too much drag on that in a light shell we're not going to have enough to bring everything back to where it's supposed to work okay but we're still going to snap the fingers on our release so as long as our barrel passes that when it comes back it's going to let go of that shell so if we're short cycling, we're going to put our empty back in and we're going to have a shell on our carrier jammed against the bottom of the barrel. All right? So that's another thing to think about. If, it's, if you do a single shell and everything goes thunk thunk and you've looked at all this and it looks good and you stand here on the bench and you do it by hand and everything locks and everything works fine, it's short cycling. It's not coming all the way back far enough for that to override and grab the bolt. Alright, I hope that helps y'all. I hope y'all enjoyed this. Uh, mainly give you a little more information. You know, if it's something simple, you can mail it to me and I'll fix it. I, I generally don't do that a whole lot, but I, I will in certain cases. Uh, but it helps me greatly if you can give me a, a previous idea when I talk to you or you email me or send a comment, you don't say, it, it doesn't eject or it doesn't load the next shell at least if you watch this you can tell me it doesn't eject it's at 45 degrees I've got a shell on the carrier blah 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 gives me a better idea of, of what's coming and whether it's going to be worth fixing or not okay thanks so much for watching and see you soon